All right, this is the initial circuit diagram for a fully differential system. Uh, we'll start with this uh, initial model and then we'll add complexity as we go along. Here is the source, here is the load, and let's, let's talk through the circuit. We split the signal somehow into VS1 and VS2, and I've drawn them as AC sources, reference to this ground drawn with this symbol, which is distinct from the ground at the other end drawn with this other symbol. Uh, the sources see impedances RS1 and RS2 as they connect to the lines, line 1 and line 2. The lines travel a long distance, or a distance, uh, in the case of telephone lines it's 100 kilometers or one kilometer or whatever it is before they see a repeater. Uh, for cabling in your lab it may be a meter or half a meter or whatever or less, uh, maybe you're on the printed circuit board. In any case, they see and pick up noise along the way, voltage noise source uh, 1, voltage noise source 2. Because the system is balanced, they have, the lines have the same geometry, the same kind of wire, the same kind of materials. Uh, they both see the same noise and they both pick it up in exactly the same way. They travel down to the load and they see resi uh, load resistor 1 and load resistor 2 on their way to a completely and totally different ground than the one at the source. So we make our load measurement across these two load resistors, uh, VL, where we have the plus terminal up here and the minus terminal here. Now what can we say about currents in the system which will dictate this, this VL? Well, VN uh, noise source 1 and V and noise source 2 will create noise currents IN1 and IN2, noise current 1 and noise current through 2 through RL1 and RL2. Um, that's just by V equals IR. There's also a net source current which contributes to the system and that's going to circulate like so. Um, IS. Now let's draw, write out the uh, load voltage equation. So uh, let me change colors just so I've got some distinction here. So VL equals IN1 times RL1 minus IN2 times RL2 plus IS times RL1 plus RL2. Uh, you can pause and convince yourself that that's the case. Uh, let's say we've designated the load such that RL1 equals RL2, so we have a matched load, matched load. Let's say further that, like I said, we have the conductors arranged, the geometry materials and such that VN1 equals VN2, so the conduct the signals are matched, and this, what this implies is that IN1 equals IN2. Uh, you can convince yourself that's the case. So then this voltage at the load equation simplifies because these two terms go to zero, and we just have IS uh, RL1 plus RL2 equals IS times 2RL. You can see that the noise term, the, the noise term here and here, does not show up in the final result of the, um, the, the, the voltage measured at the load. So the system is balanced. Um, and this is the, the power of uh, balanced or differential signaling. Now you may wonder why didn't RS1 and RS2 these two guys show up in our final equation for the system, well, they do kind of show up. So let me write out IS equals VS1 plus VS2 time, uh, divided by RS1 plus RL1 plus RL2 plus RS2. Again, you can pause and convince yourself this equation is correct. Um, and this is true even though there are different grounds at the, the source and the load, uh, even, even, if you got dip, if you, even, even if you had the different grounds here at the source and the load, you're going to get some equation very similar to this. If we want the load voltage to accurately reflect the, this VS1 plus VS2 term, we need RS1 
uh, to be roughly equal to RS2. Uh, and practically speaking, we want them to be as low impedance as possible. In fact, zero ohms. You want the output impedance of the source to be zero ohms. And in that case, IS would equal VS1 plus VS2 uh, divided by two times the load resistance, because remember we match the load from over here. So in a differential system, we want the, this impedance to be as low as possible, we want this impedance to be as high as possible, and we want the lines in between the two to be matched. Those are the three key things of a differential signal, signaling system. Uh, okay, now here with this equation, uh, getting too many colors, I'm going to switch back to white. Uh, here we get something that's very, very similar to a single-ended case um, with only one ground wire. Why is this system not single-ended? Well, the, the ground of the differential pair isn't connected to the ground of the load system. So this ground is not shorted to this ground. The ground if it was a single-ended system, these two somehow would be shorted together and you would just reference this guy to this line traveling between the two. But that's not the case. Let me back up. They are separate. Uh, because these grounds aren't connected, they can't be contaminated by ground currents at the source of the load, um, and the high impedance load at the end makes all the difference. We're not referencing this signal with respect to ground, we're referencing this signal with respect to this signal down here. Now I want to note, and it's an important note, that this guy, this VS2, could in fact be equal to zero volts. It, it could be equal to ground. It could be equal to this ground at the at the, the source end. But very, very importantly, it, it is not, not, not tied to the ground over here. We're referencing this voltage up here to this voltage down here. Both of those voltages see a very high impedance between themselves and the ground of the load system. That's a key point of differential signaling. Now, as I mentioned, this is a simple circuit diagram for differential systems. Let me uh, scroll down and draw a more complete diagram for a differential signal system. All right, this beast is what your system will look more similar to if you're uh, at anything other than DC. Uh, and the big difference is I've included the reactive components in the system. Uh, so here, a lot of things are the same. The differences are these capacitances here are parasitic capacitances across the source resistors. Uh, they see the same noise as before, and this noise is from inductive pickup um, from nearby magnetic fields, for instance. Uh, they both have some sort of uh, noise current. Um, I drew it as a noise source, but it's a noise um, uh, uh, as, a, as a current source, uh, but it's a noise current, and this is from capacitive coupling within the system. It's going to take some time to charge up lines and discharge lines, and so that's going to go to some ground, and I just drew it as the same ground as we have at the, the load termination. It could be some other ground. It doesn't matter. Um, and again, we have parasitic capacitances at the load resistance, and these are actually probably going to be more important because this is a very high impedance um, resistor, and so um, the capacitance will be a greater portion of the total impedance uh, seen at the load. Uh, let's say a couple things. So again, VN1 equals VN2 in this system because we've been using twisted pair or closely coupled pairs of wires or traces that are laid very close together on a printed circuit board, and uh, I one is going to equal I2 because we have similar geometry, similar geometry, the capacitive coupling will geometry uh, will be the same or or maybe it's shielded uh, which is another topic uh, but we d d designed the system such that both legs of the system are very similar and so they see the same noise, they see the same, same see the same noise voltage, they see the same noise current. I'm not going to solve the math of this system but I just wanted to motivate it to, so you know that this is actually the system you're, you're using. Let me scroll down now and write out a quick example of uh, how you would um, comment quantitatively about how good is the balancing in your system. 
to quantify how good is the balancing in your system, you talk about the common mode rejection ratio, or CMRR. I'm just going to talk about this briefly. You can look it up on your own uh, somewhere else if you want to know more about it. Here I've redrawn a circuit very similar to our original circuit. It may not exactly look like it, but it is. Uh, if you think through it, we have a common mode uh, voltage coming in. It's passing through some uh, source resistors uh, down to some load resistors and at the end we take a differential measurement which I've labeled VDM so VDM for differential measurement uh, differential mode and VCM for common mode what is CMRR? CMRR is equal to 20 log and there are some different different de definitions of this but they're pretty similar VCM over VDM and this is going to be in decibels all right, so that's a pretty simple equation. And what do we want? The higher the CMRR, the better. We want this differential mode uh, noise source to be as small as possible. We want the common mode signal to be as as high as as possible. So if RS1 equals RS2 and RL1 uh, one equals RL. To, then if that were true then the differential uh, noise source would be equal to zero and of course that's not going to be true in most cases because there will be slight differences in the resistances uh, but that's the general idea. For measuring this practically in a lab or in the field you can note that this resist these resistances are going to be much much smaller than these resistances over here so making the measurement out here right next to the load is going to be about the same as making the measurement back at the uh, source. So usually you would just me make the measurement at the load. Final comment about CMRR. You may have a, a spec for your entire system and what you would want to do is for each individual component as you're designing your system, you they may have a CMRR, common mode rejection ratio, uh, number listed for them like your op amps or whatever. And you want to make sure that everything of uh, the CMRR for your individual discrete components is higher than what you want for the total system.